Let's talk about our tones and our strokes, how to create these tones through our body mechanism. In general, you want to throw like you're moving energy from your back through your arms, through your shoulder, elbow, and wrist, and then fingertips. It's kind of like as if you were going to throw a ball. Right? Your energy comes from all the way to the back, and if you pay attention, you lead with your shoulder, then you follow through with your elbow, wrist, and then all the fingers. Same thing, you're kind of creating this wave-like motion. The same thing happens here. So if you're playing your basic doom sound, the most basic one is to play the first knuckles there, that's the top of the, the palm of the hand, on the inside of the rim, which would be right about there, okay? Or this way, if you're doing it this way. I'm just gonna, and all the cells of my skin are gonna touch there. Just throwing the hand into it, kind of leading with the wrist, and then pulling the sound out. I'm never striking, or hitting, or banging. I'm pulling the sound out, right? I'm thinking lift, lift, up. And your shoulder is relaxed, and everything's really relaxed. That's holding that up. You could also do it with the thumb, and you're gonna play the whole part of the thumb, right? Right into there, all the way to the bottom, not just the tip. Somewhere halfway between the center and the edge. I'm gonna use a turning of the forearm motion that's gonna go like that. And I'm gonna practice it lifting off of the, the drum this way. Not so much following through right now. We'll do that in playing with a real bounce and a lift. Like the skin of the drum is a trampoline and your finger is a person just bouncing off of it. You could also use a curved finger playing off the center for a different tone. And you just let go of that first knuckle and you kind of create almost a 90 degree angle but with all the knuckles. That's right there. It's a nice controlled sound. Or with the middle finger. Each finger is going to be different for each person. And I could also do it with all four fingers. Sometimes I let the, the heel of my hand just come on the rim and then just let these come over this way and it'll be like that. Once again, really loose. And I can play with the different colors of that. And they each have their unique sound. Uh, if I'm playing handheld, sometimes I'll do it this way. With, with, once again, all four fingers with all four pads. Or on smaller drums, you might use just the ring finger and do it that way. So it just depends on the drum and how much sound you need from it. The tech is playing the top joint right where the skin meets the shell. And we're going to use all four fingers for that. Traditionally, you might use the fourth finger mainly. And first, you use the stroke this way. You could also use the other side of the forearm twist using the thumb as your counterweight to get that tech in that way. So it might look like this. First start off kind of straight up and down, add any lips, and then turn the thumb to turn it all the way that way. So ultimately I'm doing that. First is just this, then an ellipse that way, and then a twisting of the forearm. Kind of three things happening at once if you choose to do it that way. I could use the middle finger or the pinky. Think of the pinky as the side of the hand then the index. When I'm doing the index, I'm actually turning this way. So the index is grouped with the thumb muscles. And the thumb helps bring the index that way. I can go from index to ring finger. Index. I'm kind of twisting that way at that point. And the tech should also sound like the ka. If you're playing lap style, you put the hat on top of the drum this way, kind of like at 12 o'clock. You never want to feel like you're holding the drum, you're just balancing the drum. Okay, so it's going to be right about here. Then you let the fingers kind of go over and they're straight. They don't, not too far back so they're curved and not too far forward so the wrist is bent. Wrist, wrist wants to be as flat as it can and then you lift. You create like a little one person tent. You lift here and then you also want to play it so that top joint is on the rim, where the skin meets the wood. A 
okay? You could use your ring finger or you could use the middle finger. Traditionally, the ring finger is used, but you're gonna have to see what works for you. So you could throw it this way. And you really wanna feel like you, you could throw your hand down. How do you keep that balanced, you know, without locking, locking this up? You don't wanna overly digitize. You wanna feel like you're still throwing the energy from your back. You know, you could practice in different ways and you could also do a snap. So if my hand's here, I roll over onto the thumb. Thumbnail is almost facing down. The first joint is just over the edge of the drum. Okay. And then I take the ring finger, go all the way over on the side of the thumb and bring it over this way. So it's going to go. I could get a lot more sound this way. Sometimes with very little effort. At first you'll feel like you have to play it really hard, but once you play it and get it, you could really be graceful with it. So tech and ka together should sound about the same. Tekka, 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 tekka. And also, if you're playing the ka sound, if you're playing handheld, you would also, as we talked about holding it up here, you want it. How do you feel this freedom of throwing that ring finger? with your thumb while it's in the thumb hole. So the idea is still to feel the freedom of that forearm that way, right? You put a little bit of the weight onto your thumb as you turn the thumb, hopefully from kind of a pivoting position this way. And same thing here. So both together are both trying to feel like you're just really rocking the forearms. fingers so no matter what rolls you do from this way to that way just really trying to let your drum sing then you have the pa sound pa sound is basically instead of using the inside of the hand like you did with the doom you just use the fingertips kind of like there's little suction cups on all five fingertips and then a little bit of the the heel so in slow motion i'm kind of coming at it like this to see it this way, like that. And it's a dry sound. Right? You don't want to come off it too fast or it starts to ring. You don't need to put the bottom of the hand too much in, then you get too much of a dark sound of the doom sound. So just pa. And you can play it right over the center sometimes. If you're playing handheld style, you might play it more like that. When you're playing your tones, you want to think of them as colors, right? The drum is your canvas. Your hands are like the paintbrushes. And the tones are your colors, right? And we, cre we create those. So I think of doom as my red tone. Tek as my, and ka as my yellow tones. Tek, ka, tek, ka, tek. And pa as my blue tone. So if I play a, a rhythm like melody, if I go doom, doom, teka, pa, doom, teka, pa, I could think red, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, or doom, doom, teka, pa, doom, teka, pa. We can use uh, some rolls, and as you see, it's, it's notated R, and it basically most of the rolls go pinky, ring, middle, index, and then to the other tech. So it could be a five stroke roll. Pinky, ring, middle, index, tech. Or you could also go the other way. There's a whole section about uh, finger rolls in the book that, that you could get into, but that's basically your five stroke. And if the tempo is really stro slow, you can do a nine stroke, which would be pinky, ring, middle, index, then pinky, ring, middle, index, then tick. Or include snaps. This one straight up and this one with snaps. 